Now that I've identified the monuments that the surveyor should visit, I'll make a map of the results. I've renamed and symbolized all of my layers, and I've also zoomed in to the monuments to give as much detail as possible. To start the map, I'll open a new print composer, and I'll call it Albuquerque Monuments. Click OK. And my print composer opens. The first thing I'll do is go to the Composition tab and make sure that my sheet is set to be an ANSI A letter size sheet of paper, that it's landscape and orientation, and that it has an export resolution of 300 dpi. Next, I'll add my map. I'll click the Add Map button and drag a box on my composition approximately where I want my map to go, knowing that I can always shift this around and resize it later. I'll go up to the Align menu and choose Align Center to make sure it's aligned. And I'll click on the Item Properties and click the Set to Map Canvas Extent. Finally, I'm going to use the Move Item Content button and shift this map a little bit to the east. There's a nice space down here for the legend that I'll add later, so I wanted to give that just a little more breathing room. Next, I'll add the title by using the Add Label tool. I'll click up at the top where I want it to go and type in the title, which will be Albuquerque Vertical Control Monuments. I'll click the font button. I'm going to give this a font size of 28 bold, and I'm going to make it Times New Roman. And click OK. Now I'll grab the graphic handles around this font item and drag it all the way to the left and right sides of the map. And you can see as I drag graphics around when I'm next to the edge of the paper or next to the edge of another graphic element, there'll be a little red snapping line that appears that helps you line things up. Finally, I'll go to the alignment section and give the title a center alignment. Now I'll add the legend. I'll use the Add Legend tool and click in this empty space where I'd like it to go. I'll go to the item properties to format my legend. I'm going to take out the legend name. I don't think my map readers need it labeled to know what it is. And I'm going to uncheck the background to make it transparent so that the map is visible through it. And I'll shift this around to a better location. Since the roads are labeled on the map, I don't feel I need them on the legend as well. Legends are for features the map reader is going to need an explanation for. And the roads are pretty intuitive. So I'll select Major Roads from the Item Properties tab and click Delete to remove them from the legend. Finally, I want to reduce the font size of the legend items just a little bit to give a little more room. So I'll expand fonts, go into item font, and knock this down to size 10 and click OK. Now it fits in that space a little bit better. Next I'll go to the add label tool and click in the bottom corner of the map to add some text with my name and data sources. I'll give myself credit, cartography, John Doe, and I'll credit my data sources. City of Albuquerque, Bernalillo County, and NM Argus. I'll go down, grab the graphic handles on this text object, and expand it so I can see the entire block of text. I'm going to remove the background for that as well. And I'll go into the font and reduce the size of this text. I'll go back and grab the graphic handles and give it one final adjustment, placing it in the lower left hand corner. Now I'll add the scale bar just above that text. I'll use the Add Scale Bar button and click right there in that lower left-hand corner. Q just uses map units for scale bars. And remember, our map is in the state plane coordinate system, New Mexico Central, and the units are in feet. Therefore, to make the scale bar read in miles, I'm going to have to put in the number of feet in a mile. I'm going to switch the units to feet, and I'm going to change the map units per bar unit to 5,280 and change the label to miles. Next I'll change the style of the scale bar to line ticks middle and I'll adjust the segment length to the number of feet in a mile as well, 5,280. I'll click the X to uncheck the background. I'm going to reduce the number of segments on the right to 2 and the number on the left to 1. Now I'll expand fonts and colors 
click the font button, and reduce the size of the font down to size 9. I'm almost done. Now the font looks good, but the, the bar thickness is a little too heavy. So I'm going to expand the display option. And down here at line width, I'm going to click the down arrow until I get it to about half a millimeter, half as thick as it was. Tweak the position a little bit, and now it looks nice. Finally, I'm going to add a neat line or a border around my composition to give it some visual focus. I'll click the shape button on the left hand side and click add rectangle. And I'll add a rectangle around the full extent of my map. I'll click the chain style button, click simple fill, and give it a fill style of no brush. I'll then make the border a little bit thicker and click OK. Once my map is complete, I'll export it to a high resolution JPEG that I can provide to the survey team. To do that, I'll click the Export to Image button, go into the My Data folder, and save it as Albuquerque Monuments Map. And now I have an exported JPEG of my final map to deliver to the survey team. In this lab, I've used several basic spatial analysis techniques to prepare data for analysis and conduct the analysis. I've reprojected data, queried and extracted data, run a dissolve operation, and used buffer and clip to identify the final set of monuments. While none of these individual operations are necessarily complex, the sequence in which they were combined allowed me to answer a spatial question quickly and easily.